being a guide is an exciting thing. In northern Minnesota, there is a guide to the Boundary Water Canoe Area and Canadian Fishing Waters that is also a pastor and an evangelist. And I'm jealous. <laughs> I would love to just be up there in the middle of nowhere with the mosquitoes and a fly rod and then to, you know, be a guide, you know, someone that would be looked to to lead me onward to catch the big fish, to kill the big moose, to uh, catch the uh, uh, monster northern uh, or many walleyes. That would just be an exciting thing. I don't know about being a guide in the Boundary Waters canoe area, but maybe you didn't know that Pastor Becker has been a guide to the jungle. I, I don't know if you know this. The jungle uh, that I'm referring to is New York City, and we used to take uh, youth trips, and we'd invite the, the adults, but we would take uh, trips into New York City, and it was so exciting. I would say to the parents, like if I would be illustrating to Jesse and Sasha here, that I would say to Mike, Mike, we're going to bring the teenagers into New York City. No guarantee whether we'll take them out and bring them home, but we guarantee we'll at least get them in, <laughs> okay? Because it's a jungle in New York City. I would invite the parents. And I remember Charlie Keeler, he detested, may he bless in peace as he's in heaven now. Uh, he detested New York City. He said, you could keep it. You could keep New York City. So I'd, I'd joke with him, Charlie, are you coming to New York City? And, and, and he'd say, no way, not on your life, not in a million years. And I remember one time before the trip that we had planned, I was going into New York City and I saw something. So part of this story is true and part of it's not true. Uh, I saw something on the streets as I was walking. And it was a fight. A fight broke out. And, and, and so I, I remembered that fight. And then Sunday came around and I was uh, uh, speaking. Charlie was here. And, and I told Charlie, I said, Charlie, we got the trip coming to New York City. Uh, you know, and this kind of like, are you coming next was my, my, my next words out of my mouth. But I said, Charlie, I was just in New York City. And I said, I saw a fight break out right on the streets. And I had to pass by it quickly because I didn't want to get involved. But right as I was passing by, the guy fighting and boxing stopped and looked up at me and said, is Charlie coming? And <laughs> Charlie laughed. The story was not true, but it sure was exciting. The teenagers, they love New York City. <laughs> they love New York City. And I would try to be a good guide to those kids. Um, in this passage of Scripture, we have in verse 17 of Proverbs chapter 2, a story about the strange woman. Now, I say it that way just because that's how I heard it first when I was working with youth and heard a youth evangelist, and that's exactly how he pronounced it. Can you say it with me? The strange woman okay this strange woman and 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 this strange woman was likely a word that came from the uh, newbies to the Canaan land the people of God but they would refer then to the locals as the strangers from Israel and many with wicked intent and so this word the strange woman um, is written about in various verses in Proverbs. And there are some not so exciting passages in the book of Proverbs about the strange woman. You could read, not now, in Proverbs chapter 5, Proverbs chapter 6, Proverbs chapter 7, Proverbs chapter 22, Proverbs chapter 23. You could read and find about the strange woman and how her ways go down into death. And it speaks of someone who is uh, has an agenda and 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 out for something and and a 
age old uh, wickedness uh, is accented even to this day in uh, the uh, sad, sad trillion dollar industry on the internet of pornography and of immorality and all that goes on in this situation. And so it's mentioned here, but it says something uh, unique uh, to my mind and to our text today about being a guide. It says, which forsaketh the guide of her youth. And, And I have often thought about this verse in regards to young people and this thought of at least she had a guide to forsake. At least she had a covenant that she was aware of that she would then knowingly turn from and and would forsake and forget the covenant of her God. And so there's a there's a uh, notice here that the strange woman is not just the foreigner, it's the among. And how that Satan would come and would, would pull and take away and, and cause people to forget the good way and the good path and the right path. And so this is a, a sad epic, but, but sadder yet would be uh, the one who would not have any clue about what God says not have any idea that there's a holy word of God and a holy God who has a wonderful will and, and path for, for, for your life uh, from youth on up and, and would have no clue about that God and his care and his love and his authority and his great plan for their lives, uh, not even able to forsake something because they never had it and they never knew it. And so I have this little thought after this phrase in the Bible, at least she had one. At least she had one. And then I want to talk to you just by way of introduction into this uh, challenge this morning for older people rather than younger people. And that is when it comes to being a guide, I'm not asking you to, uh, you know, for Alan Ritter to lead us into the Northern Boundary Waters canoe area or into New York City. I don't know. He might he might take us to Japan and back. You know, you never know if we get the military flights, uh, you know, but uh, I'm not asking you to be some sort of jungle guide or safari guide or boundary water canoe guide, but I'd like you to be a youth guide. And so the best vitamin for a Christian is which vitamin? B1. So put that letter down, B1. And the best need that we could have today for an older generation influencing the younger generation is to be one, be a guide to the young people, be someone that can point, be someone that can direct, be someone who can say, this is how, this is where, this is why, this is when, this is what. God wants you to do. Be one. Be one for the glory of God. So let's go on that challenge and consider here today the words that are needed uh, if you're going to be one, a guide uh, to the youth. First of all, there are words from God. In this passage of Scripture, we have this guide of the youth, and that guide is ultimately not a person, but it is the words of God that are guiding. The covenant of God is listed here. In verse 10 of our passage in Proverbs chapter 2, it's the wisdom of God that enters into not just your head, but into your heart. You know, uh, we can we can get it up here and get it in here in our ears and we can get it in our mind here, but, but God's got to get it in our heart. And, and we can miss heaven by that much too because we can know all about how to get to heaven and never put our weight and trust in Jesus Christ and miss heaven by 18 inches, whatever that is, from here to here. Because you got it up here, but you don't got it down here. And, and so there's, a, there's a, a wisdom that enters into your heart where you desire it and knowledge is pleasant to thy soul, where you, where you enjoy knowing about God. You desire and hunger and thirst after righteousness. You, you open up your heart so that it would enter into it. Uh, verse 11, where discretion shall preserve thee, so you won't spoil and rot. It will preserve you, and understanding will keep you keep you safe, and wise choices will will watch over you. It's the it's the way of truth. 
Uh, the wicked person leaves the paths of, of righteousness and uprightness, and they walk in the paths of darkness. And whenever I see that, I think about how they walk in darkness and know not at what they stumble. And it, it's a sad event of the of the dark paths turning from the right way. So there are words that need to come from God. And then when I was thinking about words, and, and I just would like to pause here and just think about words that are not only from God, but before we get into words that are to youth, uh, that we need to have words to God for youth, okay? We, we need to have words to God for youth. And all the words in number one are words. Words from God. Words to God. Words uh, to youth and to young people for them, to bless them. Uh, what, what, what's coming out of your mouth that would be a guide to the young people? What's coming out of your mouth when you're on your knees praying for your grandkids? And I'm thinking about them today. Uh, uh, that would be a eternal blessing to them to lift up our kids in prayer. Could we do that? Could we pray for our next generation? This is what God wants us to do. Pray that they would have a heart to learn the words of God and then deliver those words unto them because they are prone to, and if you look in verse 17, we're prone to forsake and we're prone to forget the word of God, forsaking the guide of the youth and forgetting the covenant of her God. Uh, this is this is the tendency. This is the proneness of a younger generation. It's the proneness of us is to forget and forsake. But at least we've got to get the words from God uh, and to God for our young people and get them in the ears and pray that God will put it in their hearts. That's my prayer. That's my prayer. That we put it in their ears and that God would put it in their hearts. These are words that are that are coming uh, for the glory of God to the young people um, so that they would at least know better know better uh, today some know better and don't do better and some don't know better and don't do better uh, this is the sadness of say even a subject like human trafficking and and the, the sadness of that and all of all of the hurt and that uh, but I would pray that there would be a knowing better where then they would be called to do what's right and do for the glory of God. But how are we going to know unless the words come? Uh, how shall they hear it except uh, they be told? And, and how, how shall it they be told unless they be sent? And how beautiful are the feet of them which preach the gospel to take words and to put words in the mouths of people for the glory of God. Our life ought to be a boundless energy of taking in the word of God and giving out the word of God. Amen. That's that's what it ought to be. I trust that you get up in the morning hungry and thirsting after righteousness and say, give us this day our daily bread. And, and you get some of the word of God coming in your heart and coming in your mind and blessing your life. Maybe it's from reading. Maybe it's from memorization. Maybe it's from meditation on the word of God. And then that that would cause you to have a prayer life where our words would go to God for this world and particularly our next generation and that we would take them the word of God to them and bless them saying, here's what's right. Do what's right. Please God in your life and become a guide to the youth. Number two, not only words, but T and E time and effort. You could write those two words down. It takes time and it takes effort. A, a, a continual perpetual energy today. Many of us are, I'm going to say good, tired, minus zero. What's good, tired, minus zero? G-O-O-D minus one O. G-O-D tired. We're, we're God tired because we, we serve God and we please God uh, every day this week. And, and, and I, was, I was exhausted and we had uh, Graceland over uh, as Grandma and, and G-Pa uh, took Graceland over and we woke up the next day and Graceland says, Jeepa, jump with me on the trampoline. And I said, 
to myself, no way. I'm too tired to jump on the trampoline. And then I thought, I better say yes, and I better do it because one day I'm not going to be able to jump on the trampoline, <laughs> probably sooner than I think. And so I got out there, and boy, it wasn't too many jumps. And I was like, <laughs> you know, and I said, Grace, can we just sit down? <laughs> can we just rest on the trampoline? But you know what? It takes energy to get ahead of these kids. Amen? But Satan has seemingly boundless energy, and he's always ahead of these kids. Um, and, 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 and there's another guide. We'll talk about that in a moment. But it's time and energy. Uh, there is a complete dependence upon us in the beginning. And doesn't an infant take a lot of time and energy? Wow. They're eating and pooping. That's about it. Okay? And if you don't give them some time and energy, uh, they're going to be crying real loud and they're going to be stinking real much. Okay? <laughs> and you got, they're totally dependent. Totally dependent. And, and then they start to grow and then they start to, you know, all, oh, you know, the, the uh, latest one. Um, I got 15 of them, so I got to think, you know, which, which one, you know. But they, you know, they, they first turn, turned over, turned over. Um, what a blessing. And, and 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 so so there's an energy there and an independence and then lifting the head and smiling and laughing and, and, and then then there's this walking and progression and then look out and it doesn't take long and like a rocket ship these kids are taken off into the big bad world they're taken off and we got a little time to point them in a good and godly direction so that they would take off for God that's the goal it takes energy. Uh, they're completely dependent upon us, and then they, they, they progress. But they still want us to be a blessing to them. But they, they're, they're looking for someone. Do you know there's someone today that's playing dolls on a YouTube channel making a fortune because a zillion kids just want somebody to play dolls with, but there's an older generation that has no time to play dolls with the kid. So somebody on YouTube will make a zillion bucks trying to, you know, just play with dolls. And the kids are playing with the person on the YouTube channel. Uh, where's, where's, where's mom and dad? Well, it takes time. It takes energy. Uh, you get exhausted. Um, where's that guide? To the youth, this guide is not paid by the hour. Okay, this doesn't, this, 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 the retirement plan is only a tire plan. It'll get you tired. All right. Now, it won't, you don't retire, but the benefits are out of this world. Okay. Because for God, there are eternal benefits when you invest in the lives of kids. Think of these kids here. Um, one of them said to grandma, I'm looking at grandma back there. We got all done uh, Monday night. He was there. Tuesday night, he was there. Wednesday night, he was there. Thursday night, he was there. Friday night, he was there. And I listened to him say to us as he left with Grandma, I'll see you tomorrow night. <laughs> you ain't seeing me tomorrow night. <laughs> I said, I'm tired. <laughs> um, but the kids, man, they're just, they're just ready. They're just wanting to, you know, come on, help me. And, and that, it, that, that thirst, that that hunger, that void, uh, will go anywhere and everywhere. And believe you me, Satan's out to fill it if we don't. And so there's a need for us. Um, our teenagers are getting into all kinds of stuff without a guide to the youth. And very early on, uh, they can forsake the right path and the godly path and get into all kinds of other paths. And, and so we ought to have a desire uh, uh, to bless them and to take the time and effort. I'm going to uh, go to another verse of Scripture that's very familiar here at this point in the sermon. And that is uh, to the point of Ecclesiastes 12.1 where it says, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth. In the days of thy youth. This is the wisdom of Solomon, his uh, spoken wisdom to the young people. Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 1. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, uh, lest the evil days come nigh and the years draw nigh when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. 
Uh, if you don't remember your creator and you live without God, guess what? You're going to have days with zero eternal, godly, beautiful pleasure in them. And you'll only have either the context of Ecclesiastes 12, the growing old and that's it uh, type of emptiness or no pleasure in the days because you're reaping the the seeds sown of sin and the, the, the there is no uh, eternal pleasure eternal pleasure in sin the pleasures of sin are for a season but that season runs out that season runs dry that season is over and, and it's it's a it's a sad thing so God says remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth why should we call and cause and desire and pray and give energy and time and effort and words for young people to get excited about God. Well, because now's the time where they need to get excited about God. Uh, David Murray writes about uh, the enemy's plan. The enemy's plan says youth is for pleasure, uh, middle age is for business, and old age might be for religion, but put it off to the old fogies, okay? God says youth and middle age and old age is all for God. Why? Because we've been created with a purpose and a plan and, a, and, and, and God's power and, and position over our life to watch us and care for us and guide us and save us and keep us. And he's got a wonderful and an exciting plan and blessing for your life. Why should we remember in our youth? And, and we're, we're all as young as we're going to be, okay? So listen up here. Don't think that this is just for somebody else here. Okay, none of us are getting any younger. None of us. And so why should we remember our creator in the days of our youth? And, and, and compared to being a, a, a trillion years old, and that's what we'll be someday in eternity when we stop counting. Okay, so we're all young compared to that. If we're 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, it, it, we're, we're all young compared to eternal but especially the days of our youth. What, what's so exciting about youth? And put down, as this author does, energetic uh, years are in our youth. They got a lot of energy. These kids have boundless energy. I mean, like the ever-ready battery, they just keep on going, keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. Uh, someone said, you know, do a study on your own physical stamina and just try to keep up with a three-year-old all day. Just try to do what the three-year-old does and you'll be like ah, ah, exhausted, okay? They are, they're energetic. They're energetic. Their gas uh, doesn't run out. Ours is on empty, but theirs is not running out. They are healthy years. They are strong years. They are muscular years and their mind is sharp and clear. They're energetic years and, and they're bright with enthusiasm and determined uh, with their wills. They are also, uh, number two, sensitive years. Sensitive years. Impressionable years. Um, years where uh, great impressions can be made upon them. Uh, sadly, when we get older, we get tougher, we get harder, we get thicker, we get saying, ah, you know, I thought this way all my life, I'm not changing. And, and, and we get old and stubborn, but young people can be impressionable and be impressed uh, with God and with God's word and with God's eternal salvation. Uh, most people get saved when they are young people. Let's just put it that way statistically. And this young and youth and impressionableness, uh, and that leads us to this next word, teachable years, where they can absorb and take in things that will just be with them for a lifetime. Oh, that the word of God would come in their mouth. I, I am so glad people talk to me and train me and made me and bribed me and, 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 and put scripture in my mind, for that is what comes to me. And, and, and learning about Jesus and learning about eternal truths uh, is something they like a sponge soak up and learn in their youth. But let me add one. Um, that is the word dangerous years, dangerous years. Youth is dangerous years. Okay. It's dangerous out there. It's a jungle out there. Okay. Uh, you could, you could do stuff that you'll never, uh, forget, but you'll only regret if you make the wrong decision. 
as a young person. Remember not the sins of my youth. I remember I preached one day on that passage of Scripture, and my next point was, repeat not the sins of my youth. Okay? Uh, it's, it's, it's the decisions that, uh, you know, when our, our lives are in gear and peer pressure is great and drugs and alcohol and garbage and immorality come and, and, and our hormones are raging and all the changing and all the things that are going on and, and friends and peer pressure and bullying, all kinds of things come at us like a, like a freight train that we have to deal with and digest and uh, family problems and, and governmental problems and national problems and, and pandemic uh, problems come and they're all kind of like trying to be digested and reacted to uh, by young minds and oh how they need a guide through these things amen uh, someone to guide them and help them and bless them in process in thinking biblically about it we're driving uh, to VBS on Thursday and and we get bah! on the phones uh, tornado coming uh, bah! and then Grayson's like no I said Grayson you are in an all-weather vehicle. If it's cold, we can turn the heat up. If it's hot, we can turn the air conditioner on. If it's raining, we can roll the windows up. If it's if a tree's falling, we can stop and dodge it. And hopefully, and if, if, a, if a tomato's coming, I, I, I didn't really know what to do. All I thought was keep driving, keep driving. And this bomb would not stop. I mean, first my phone, then it was Dorinda's phone. I don't know, Verizon hit it first and TNT, AT&T got it next. I don't know what happened. But, and then it would, it would keep changing the time and keep alerting us and going again and again. And every time... Graceland was, you know, ah, ah, life is falling apart. I said, we're just going to keep going. And the rains came down and the floods came up and the car kept going, you know. Bah, bah. And then we looked back and Graceland was sleeping. She was sleeping. I said, yes. <laughs> and we made it to vacation Bible school and the storm passed over. But they, they need a a guide to their youth. Uh, there could be uh, dangerous uh, temptations out there. And we need to uh, know that the creator, not evolution, which is coming into the minds of these kids, not there is no God and there's no consequence for sin, but there is a creator God who wants to bless them and, and help them and encourage them and how that we need to build godly friendships and how that we need to be uh, in, in, in godly instruction here and encouragement, lest all the things that, that, that are in this battlefield for the soul and mind and life and energy of our young people. I, I, I just wonder about that, you know, sometimes about all the energy that, that, that a young, young person has. Uh, your pastor, you know he's half crazy, okay? But I went down to that Eagles Super Bowl thing, and I just saw the energy of these kids. They were kids that had a little too much of something. They had a little too much Eagle, and they had a too, little too much uh, of whatever somebody was buying them free if the Eagles won the Super Bowl thing. I, I, I saw energy, though. I saw energy. They were climbing up the statues, and they were shouting, Praise the Eagles. I thought, well, if we could get them to shout, praise Jesus. I went into Center City, Allentown once, and there was a drug gang, you know, and, and I didn't run. I didn't hide my wallet. I didn't run in fear. I went right up to them with gospel tracks. And you know what I said to them? You know, take me to your leader. And I said, I said, with all of your energy for Jesus, we could turn the Lehigh Valley upside down for God. And they're like looking at me like, what? You know, but what a, what a, what a need today is to point young people with all their energy in these dangerous years to point them uh, for the glory of God. And that leads me to my last point, uh, that, that we need an example to follow. That's what our kids need. They need to follow an example, a godly example. Um, you have no idea of the example and the blessing and the influence that you can be. There are plenty of bad examples going back to Proverbs chapter 12. Uh, there to deliver thee from verse 12 of Proverbs chapter 2, uh, the evil man. Oh, what's he doing? He's speaking twisted things, forward things, the idea of twisted things, twisted speech. And the, the sad uh, uh, part about it, I, I had a, 
a thought, maybe I've given it before, and it's just this memory that I have of actually chasing after young people. Your pastor did that? Yes. I came and they scattered and I ran after them. I couldn't catch them then. I probably can't catch them now. Uh, but they ran. They ran from me. They they knew why I was there. I was there. I was at the same house another time, and and one was listening, and the parents were listening, and I'll never forget what the other rebellious teenager said, as the TV was on in the other room, and I was trying to do a Bible study in this room. And I heard the words called out to the sister and the mom who was doing the Bible study with me. And I won't say the name and I won't say the. I only remember the first name and the last name of the girl. I won't say it uh, uh, because I don't remember the name of the guy who was in the other room. Because if I said it, you might know it. Why? Because he wanted to become a famous movie play, play writer, a script writer for movies. And I'll never forget me trying to communicate the word of God to the sister and to the mother there. And the TV was going on in the other room with some kids there. And the words came in from the other room. I'll call her Susan. Her name wasn't Susan. Susan, come on in. You don't want to miss the rape scene. I'll never forget that. Right during the Bible study. And that kid that called wanted to become a movie producer. And I, 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 don't, I don't want to even remember his first name to trace his last name to see if his goals were met and what kind of horror and gore and whatever else uh, came out of that goal and that life. Oh, how our kids need a guide of their youth. They need a guide. They need the word of God. And they need an example because there are plenty of examples. The twisted turning of the perverse is a sad situation. Uh, the paths of the, of the uprightness are left and the walk in the way of darkness. They, they, in verse 14, they rejoice to do evil. They delight in this twisted, evil way, uh, the forwardness of the wicked. Uh, they do and love to do what is worse. They love to do what is bad. This is the wicked heart of mankind and the influences of, of our culture upon them. Crooked ways, verse 15. Um, wrong doing, wrong twisted ways, and then the strange woman, immoral, seductive, promiscuous, uh, ungodly, the harlotry uh, that's there, and the seduction into even this particular sin is present there, forgetting and forsaking the covenant of her God, and the way of this, and where it's going to lead, verse 18, whose house inclineth to death. And her paths are unto the dead. It is a death trap. And Satan smiles. And none that go in unto her return again. And they take hold uh, of the they either take they hold of the paths of life. And so there's a there's a, a bad influence that's that's present. It's evident. It's it's there. Uh, but praise God. Even in this passage of scripture, what, what else do we find? We find a good influence. We find a good influence. This wicked, verse 22, will be cut off from the earth. They'll be rooted out. They'll be literally vomited out in the judgment of Almighty God. That's what God says about the wicked. So don't, don't follow them over the cliff into eternal destruction as they're removed and uprooted um, out of the land. But there's a, a good example this, this is a good example. Let's find it in close today in verse 10. Uh, the wisdom that enters in and it's pleasant to the soul and it's delivering and discretion is upon them. And, and it's those who do not leave the paths of unrighteousness. Verse 20, that thou mayest walk in the paths, the way of good men and keep the paths of the righteous. Wow. There's a, there's a, there's a path to follow. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in them. 
Uh, there is a, a delight. This upright, verse 21, will dwell in the land and the perfect shall remain in it. There's this promise and there's this blessing of God in, in, upon the righteous. And I'd like to close with the thought of that verse out of the book of Psalms. Uh, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. Um, you know, when you read a verse like that, it's interesting just to think about the possibilities. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Now, who's the he? Well, we could say the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he, the Lord, delighteth in the in the way of, of that person's steps. Well, that's one possibility. Uh, maybe the he is the good man. The good man delights. So, so in the first one, God delights in the steps of this man. And then maybe the, the, the man is being spoken of and how uh, the steps of a good man and he delighted. We delight in stepping in a right path and going a good and godly direction. Uh, so, God delights in the man's way. Uh, God delights in his way being in the man's way. The man delights in his way because his way has become God's way. And so any way you combinate this uh, thought of who's the he, it's all good. It's all good because it's God's word and good steps that are delighted in. What step are you taking today? Maybe you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior from sin. Maybe you could take a step toward believing in Jesus and receiving Christ in your heart and having him change your life and believing on him and receiving him as your personal Savior from sin. Uh, maybe that'd be a good step for you today. Maybe you're here today as an old fogey. You say, oh, I'm just an old fogey. I can't be a youth guide. <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can be a youth guide, all right? If you, if you have the Word of God in you and you have some words to God for our young people and you have some words to the young people to bless them, it's going to take some time and energy and God wants you to be a good example for a bad example will ruin all the words and time and energy we put in if they can point a finger and not see Jesus in our lives. And we ought to be a good example so that all who come behind us would find us faithful. And that's a good song to end on. So let's close with even the chorus of that song that was printed in the bulletin. I've already stole one. If I can dig it out, I can not need to steal another one. I found it. But let's, let's pray and then we'll sing that chorus again, okay? Lord, I pray that you would help us to become youth guides, Lord. That you would help us, Lord, to have and be so saturated with your word that it would spill out of our lives and that we'd even pray for our next generation uh, words of scripture and blessing upon them. And then we would roll up our sleeves to give those words. That we would take the time and the energy and the effort to be the guide of our youth, Lord, and that we would realize that there are good examples and bad examples. Help us to ever uh, desire to be a good example in every way, in our attitude, in our time, in our treasure, in the way uh, that we conduct our lives, Father, that we would be a good example to the next generation, Father. So let us echo from this corner and be a lighthouse for you, dear God. And may all who come behind us find us faithful. We pray in Jesus' name.